A few weeks ago, we had the opportunity to sit down with Anthony Scaramucci, the Mooch, and talk about some great topics. Anthony's an American entrepreneur, and he's also the former White House communications director. We talked about faith, we talked about Israel, we even talked about the seven laws of Noah. Let's check it out. What role overall would you say that God plays in your personal life? Listen, I mean, I'm a practicing Catholic. I mean, I'm a, I believe in God. You know, I have a lot of enormous religious faith. I mean, I actually think the dude walked out of the cave and was resurrected. That's a little different from you guys. <laughs> you guys laugh at us for believing that, but uh, I grew up with that. Uh, I'm confident in my religious views, and they're, but they're my religious views. They're personal to my story, and they're things that I've shared with my family. I'm happy to talk about it with you if you ask, but it's not something that I'm sitting out there proselytizing. But I have a tremendous amount of faith in God, and I have a tremendous amount of faith in uh you know, trying hard to do the right thing, but also accepting that, you know, there's a whole phone book of flaws that I happen to be sitting on that are, are my flaws. And so I'm not sitting here with any righteousness or sanctimony about my religious faith. I'm just telling you that uh, I believe, I have a strong faith. That's, that's certainly the beginning of, of it all. And it's such a great thing to hear um, someone who has such strong faith being in, um, you know, being a high profile individual. So you would consider yourself a, a strong backer of Israel. Has that something that's always been important to you? Or is that something that like evolved with you over time or that, or it's been pretty standard? Well, I, you know, listen, I mean, I had, uh, again, I grew up in a, in an area where there were, uh, you know, a lot of Jewish families and, uh, right. I don't, I don't want to give up the last name of the families. I don't know if it's appropriate, but uh, one of my uh, friends who was a girl, not a girlfriend, okay. uh, invited her father into our 11th grade social studies class. We were taking European history, and uh, he was a Holocaust survivor. And okay. so he, you know, one of the seminal moments in my life, I'm literally 16 years old, tapping my leg, trying to get out of class to go take <laughs> my learner's permit. Okay. Her father descends on the class and tells one of the most riveting stories that I've ever heard in my life about his time in a labor slash concentration, you know, camp of terror. Mm. He had, was a young boy at the time and he had indelible ink on his arm and he talked about the deaths and he talked about having to acclimatize himself to literally piled up bodies of, uh, of dead people, many of which were neighbors of his uh, in the town he grew up in. And so, you know, when you learn the stories and you see it for for what it actually really is, and you can actually talk about it for what it really is, okay, that is uh, man's inhumanity to man. And so if you don't stand up for it, I mean, there's cliches out there, and I can't remember all of them, but one of them is, is that evil uh, lurks where innocent, kind people fail to act. And so... Right. Uh, I think we have a duty to stay on watch for things like this. You know? Well, that, that's certainly true, and we certainly appreciate all your support for, for Israel, for the Jewish people um, as a whole. Just a completely random question. Who was the first person to call you the mooch? <laughs> uh, Paul Montoya, uh, 1972 in the second grade. Oh, okay. Oh, so you remember clearly. Yeah, so, you got it. Oh, yeah, because my last name is Scaramucci. Right. And so these kids used to call me Mooch. And that just, it just stuck you know, with you even but, through your businesses, political career, everything. And, and been called Mooch my whole life, you know. And so it's interesting, like, the liberals love it because it's apparently a Mooch is a pejorative, like, right, you know, you're mooching off the right. Mooch. So right. I like to tell people who really knew, okay, well, I really should be called Mooched because <laughs> I've been Mooched the whole, my whole life, right? But that's fine. But, I mean, listen, I, 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 don't, I don't mind it at all. I mean, something that's been with me, for my entire life, you know, since I was like seven or eight years old. So, you know, if some people like to turn it into a pejorative from a political perspective, they can do that, but they're not going to silence me. You know, they can try to disfigure me. They can try to comport me. They can use Italian American stereotypes right. and all of this nonsense that I've heard in my life. Sure. It's totally fine, sure. but they're not going to silence me as long as I have a voice and I'm above ground. And that way I'm like a lot like a Jew, you know, like these cliches where they can take the gold out of your teeth, but they can't take the education out of your brain. You know, go go fill your brain with education. Sure. I mean, they can end your life, and then your brain dies with your body. But, you know, you, as long as you got your education in your mind, I'm going to be in up for the fight. For sure. You know, I like, ta I like taking these cats on, by the way, because they, they're typically 
are going to underestimate a guy like me. You know, they're not going to think I'm as well read as I actually am. So I like cutting them with a buzz saw. You know? <laughs> no, and we, we all we definitely all enjoy uh, we, we we enjoy watching the show as well. So Anthony, I wanted to ask you first of all if you agree that God in the public sphere has you know dwindled, and there might be some you know results that have impacted our society from that. So first of all, do you agree with that? And second of all, as someone who's been, you know, kind of across the political spectrum, what do you think that we could do as a society to bring God sort of back into the public sphere? Well, well I mean, listen, I mean, this is just my observation of our culture. Um, we've gotten smarter from a technological perspective and from a scientific perspective and from a medical research perspective. And so it seems like every time the civilization gets a little bit smarter, uh, there's a large group of people that get very smug as it relates to God and the belief in God. And so I sort of laugh at the atheists because they actually have a belief as well, right? They have a faith that uh, something doesn't exist where perhaps maybe you and I believe in the faith that something does right. exist. But, you know, um, we owe the Ju Judeo concepts, the Judy concepts of Judaism really for m leaping the world forward from paganism mm. into monotheism, which sprung from that all of the major science, all of the major technology. Once we stopped our superstition of worshiping many gods and focused on one benevolent god, uh, the world seemed to come into order. So for me, bizarrely, that's like more evidence to me that there is one. And so I think what ends up happening now, it's sort of hip and cool for younger people not to believe uh, because it makes them look like, you know, well, look, I'm, I'm smarter than the Jamok that believes. Right. You may or may not be smarter, but, but what I have found is that I think it's been, for me, it's, I think it's part of my biological design. You know, I didn't choose my sexuality. I didn't choose my belief in God, but I do feel it. I feel God's presence in my inner fiber. And so I think a lot of people, a lot of Americans feel that way. Some of them don't, but I think the ones that don't are more uh, uh, becoming tone deaf to their own spirit, becoming tone deaf to their own identity, and they're trying to fit in to whatever it is that they think is cool. You know, And so that'll last for a period of time, but even after every major technological leap, uh, people turn back to their faith. You know, I, I think of, uh, you know, I don't know what you know about Russian history or the Soviet Union, but I think about the move to atheism there and its eventual repeal. Uh, I think of what Stalin once said, what of the Pope? He has no armies. Mm. Uh, and then we discover that the Pope is one of the most powerful people in the world because he has his faith. You know, you think about what John Paul II did in the helping to roll back the Iron oh, Curtain, yeah. this comes from faith. Sure. So me, sure. me, I do believe that this thing goes in cycles. Uh, we could be on a secular downturn with some of the youth right now. But my prediction is, is uh, you know, they, they have an expression in the Army that there are no atheists in the foxholes. Right, right play, absolutely. Right? So, so me, you know, people get back to their faith, you know, and we're on a journey here. Uh, it's an uncertain journey. Uh, and I think uh, one of the compasses for me, one of the real anchors, has been my faith. That's, this, is, this is all great stuff to hear. And, and first of all, I, I agree with you um, on, on your, certainly on your perspective as far as um, the, the role of religion and the role that, that, that Judaism played. But after Judaism, that the, that the growth of Christianity and Islam played in sort of shaping the world from this completely paganistic society into a mm -hmm. world that, you know, was gradually moving towards, you know, a greater monotheism. And even, you know, from, from a Torah perspective, from, from a Jewish perspective, it's interesting because one of the things that we believe as Jews is that, you know, Christi Christianity and Islam have a role in sort of like the shaping of the world in, in that very sense that you just said of, of taking you know, a, a large population of the world that was engrossed in the worst type of behavior and, you know, gradually moving them away to a belief in, you know, God and free will and reward and punishment and, so, you know, the basic tenets of morality that, that, are, that are found. And, and one of the things, you know, in, in Judaism, I, I, I always was fascinated by 
was, was this idea that it's not like an, a my way or the highway type thing. It's not, if, if, you're, if you don't believe the Jewish way that you're you know, damned eternally, that there is sort of a place for, for everyone in the world to come. And you know, when, when we think of heaven or the afterlife or you know, the future world that comes with the messianic redemption, one of the things that we believe is that if you are not Jewish, but you live an upstanding moral life and you keep what we call the seven laws of Noah, which, are, which was the basic code of morality that was given to Noah after the flood, if you keep those basic tenets, then you have a share in the world to come. If, if, you're, doing, if you're obeying God's law because God said so, we, we don't think that you have to be Jewish, and we, we're like, you know, we applaud you and, and say that, you know, for sure you're, you have a place with God. Um, it's kind of like two paths up the same mountain type thing. Well, I like to tease my Christian friends and tell all of them, including myself, that we're half Jewish <laughs> because at the end of the day, we've accepted the Old Testament, which is more or less your teachings, and we have a New Testament. So I like teasing my friends. But listen, you know, at the end of the day, um, there's one universal symbol that seems to work in all societies, and that is love for sure. and peace. And so uh, when we search for love and we search for peace, uh, we find our communion with mankind and with each other. When we're going after each other, uh, you know, it can be destructive. It could be, it could be unnecessary. But then, you know, the fight starts because someone started it. You know, like one of the things I hated about Washington is they would pull nefarious you know what on you and then now you've got to respond to them and then you're going to pull nefarious you know what on them okay. <laughs> and then all of a sudden you become them so you see i didn't want to do that right that's why i'm more into the front stabbing category i'd rather come right <laughs> at the people and then do all of the sort of nefarious stuff you know uh but but you know listen i mean there's a lot of secularism in the culture uh if there was more real religion you know not using religion as a false totem uh, to have it as a political proxy or not using religion to separate people or to preach sanctimony and righteousness, but to use religion in the concepts of uh, what they really are supposed to be, which is love and togetherness, commitment to your family, redemption, forgiveness. These are the concepts that we need to really make the society binded. So, so for me, you know, um, I've been around a block a few times, man. I grew up in a middle-class family. My parents didn't go to college. I went to some pretty decent schools, got myself educated, built a couple of companies, had a small, very short foray into politics. As measured by my time in the White House, 11 days, if you really <laughs> think about it, I was a presidential campaign for two right. years. Yeah, so I have a, a uh, an awareness now that I didn't have before, but it still all comes down to trying to row the boat together as opposed to against each other. Um, just on one last note, let's let's end on something like uh, practical. So, so yeah. my, my my mentor, uh, the Lubavitcher Rebbe, used to say uh, something something pretty interesting that anytime two people meet, it should be for the benefit of a third, meaning that there should be no there should be something positive, something practical and tangible that comes out of any any two people meeting. So one, yeah. one resolution that I, that I want to take is enhance um, my teaching of, to, of the non-Jewish world, um, the seven laws of Noah. That's something that I want to take out of, out of this conversation because I, I see from, from your strong faith um, that, you know, that as a world community, we can definitely all work together and focus on the things that we agree on and just sort of talk about you know, and strength, strengthen the cause of, of God in American life and in, in our, in the world stage at large. Um, so that's something that, that I'd like to do. Any, anything practical that you could take out of our conversation that's something tangible that would, would help change either your, you know, help, help bring up your circle of influence or the, the, the United States as a whole or, or the world at large? Well, I mean, here, here's what I'd say as you're, as you're talking, I'm thinking about uh, the whole concept of goodness, because at the end of the day, um, you strike me as a very good person. You know, you, you seem like you're I'm not saying you're not flawed. I'm sure whatever you know, maybe your wife wants to hit you once in a while, <laughs> but I'm not, I'm not saying you're perfect. But sure. like at the end of the day, I think that uh, 
um, one of the things that I'm trying to do in my life, and certainly you could help me be a part of that, is teach young kids that it's not a zero-sum game. And ultimately, when we're collaborating, uh, everybody can win. You know, Or like I'm here in my office right now, and I try to tell my staff that I'm in the pizza pie business. So I'm interested in sharing the pie, but I'm also interested in growing the pie so that it's so large that when I'm cutting my slice, you don't even feel it. And so um, I'm I'm really hopeful and, and obviously enjoyed meeting you in Las Vegas right. and enjoyed this conversation. But my takeaway is to really try to impress upon younger people, uh, whether it's the laws of Noah or it's just the concept that we are so much better together than we are apart. We can do so many more things. You know, we can leverage each other's skill sets. We can leverage each other's cultures. We can take our collective knowledge and advance the society for our children and our grandchildren. And so hopefully, you know, you and I will be a part of that. Any any ideas practically about how we could work together on something like that? I mean, I'm, I'm certainly open to the well, idea. I don't know. Maybe you and I will continue this, uh, this sort of uh, discussion and make it more viral and push it out there, you know, invite more people into it. Sounds, sounds you good. Know, yeah. I'm, I'm happy, happy to do that and I'm open to it. But my, my thing is, is that, you know, we have to get off of, uh, my idea, good, your idea, bad, my idea, good. Let me take my caveman bully stick For and sure. hit you over the Absolutely. head. We got to get off it because it's not, it's not working. Absolutely. You know, that's, hasn't worked you know we have a generation now uh basically a lost generation we, we squandered 25 years in the united states of my idea good your idea bad and you know we have nothing to show for it. we have 13 trillion dollars of deficit spending two wars to nowhere unlimited casualties in these wars nobody feels any safer totally uneven educational footprint uh dilapidated infrastructure uh, or have a cyber risk uh, to our society to really study it carefully yeah. in terms of advancements made by other states and nations against ours. And so maybe we should knock it off, you know, <laughs> and focus on what the priorities are and less less left and right and more right and wrong, you know. So, Rabbi, maybe you'll be a part of that with me. I, I know. I'd love to, yeah, I'd love to further the discussion and see how we can, you know, just grow goodness in the world. I, you know, it's it's a... Certainly, it's, there's no better cause than that. There's no better uh, thing to get behind than that. And uh, I really thank you for, for coming on today and, and just talking to us and being a part of it and, and sharing your insights, your perspective, and look forward to, to continuing it in the future. I wish you the best. Thank you. It's an honor to be on with you. And let's stay Sounds in touch. Sounds great. Thanks so much, Anthony. All the, All the best. Take care. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you'd like to help us and show your support for a few dollars a month, please visit our Patreon page in the link in the description. Thanks again, and have a great day.